Welcome everyone to the Low Fi Poly Sci Podcast. I'm your host, Michael Pickering. That's right. Low fives and low fidelity, low quality, in your face, messy as can be global news show. Here we're gonna talk about our famous question: what's going on in the world today? But today, it's time for Tuesday's top 10 list. Every Tuesday, we look at global indicators and surveys to see what countries hold the top 10 rankings in particular categories. And we have our second installment in our nine-part mini-series, Our World in Numbers. Today, we're looking at GDP per capita, as last week, we looked at GDP. And since we already delved into what GDP is last week, we'll give you the abbreviated definition of it all this week. GDP per capita is the total market value of all final goods and services produced within a country in a given calendar year, and then divided by the population of that country. Okay, cool. So what does that mean again? Question mark. And this is the really important part, lo-fi listeners, so listen well. GDP per capita is an economic variable that gives you the average income of a person in a country If, and only if, income was distributed perfectly evenly. Okay? And we'll talk about that a bit more later. But GDP per capita is the GDP of a country divided by its population. So if you have a GDP in a country of, let's say, $100 billion, and you have a population of 100 million people, you divide those two numbers and you get an average that each person in the country makes $1,000 a year if income is perfectly equal amongst all people. And like GDP, GDP per capita is measured in U.S. dollars. All right, enough of the nerd stuff. Let's go ahead and jump into the list. And our data come from the IMF estimates for 2021 because the World Bank, for some reason, does not have 2021 data up yet. So curious about this, am I? But coming in at number 10, Qatar, with a GDP per capita of $61,791. Number nine, Australia, at $62,619. Number eight, Singapore, with $66,263. Number seven, Denmark, at $67,920. Number six, Iceland, at $68,844. And now to our top five. Number five, the United States with $69,375. Number four, Norway with $82,244. Number three, Switzerland at $93,515. Number two, Ireland at $102,394. Number one, the highest GDP per capita in 2021, Luxembourg with a GDP per capita of $131,302. Now let's dig a little bit deeper and see what this is all about. What are our data really telling us? Firstly, just like our GDP list, this GDP per capita list is so geographically biased, it really, really is not funny. Like, more geographically biased than our GDP list, by a lot. There are only two countries on this list that are not Western democracies, and that's Singapore and Qatar. All the rest, Australia, Denmark, Iceland, US, Norway, Switzerland, Ireland, Luxembourg, all Western democratic countries. And our range on our list from number one to number 10, well, it's pretty damn big. Luxembourg at number one has 131K, and Qatar at number 10 has 61K. That's a difference of about $70,000 a year. That's a huge income gap just between our number one and number 10. And it kind of makes you wonder what the gap's going to be like when we look at our bottom 10 countries. We'll get to that later in a few weeks. But now that we have two top 10 lists on two different economic variables, let's compare the countries on the list. And looking at the top 10 GDP countries list, and the top 10 GDP per capita countries list, both from 2021, there is only one, I repeat, one country that's on both lists, the United States. All other countries on our list change. And this is a great, great example of why you have to use more than one economic variable when talking about levels of development across the planet. Because depending on the variable you choose, your rankings can vary a lot. But even our one country that remains on both lists 
the U.S., it goes from number one GDP to number five GDP per capita. So even that one remaining country on both lists, its rankings change. Now, I could go back and forth and see where our top 10 countries for GDP are on the list of GDP per capitas, but I feel you can do that yourself. And we may, in fact, do some of that later in the miniseries. But I want to talk more about GDP per capita as a variable, as an indication of economic development in a country, and really tackle the question, does this list even matter? That all-important question we always come back to. And I'll tell you, this list by itself most certainly does not matter. These are arbitrary rankings via a variable that assumes perfect income equality, which we sure as hell know there is no such thing as a country as any country with a perfectly equally distributed income. Just doesn't happen. And just like GDP was biased because it didn't take into account the population size of a country, GDP per capita tries to do that, but it too becomes biased because just dividing by the population creates a statistic that assumes a utopia of an economic society, which doesn't exist. Now, that being said, why even use GDP per capita? Question mark. And it's because when used correctly and in combination with other economic variables, it still provides you with a piece of the puzzle of what's going on inside of a country. You see, when you combine GDP per capita with, oh, I don't know, let's say the Gini Index, which ranks countries by level of income inequality, well then, you start to get a more accurate picture. But hey, Gini, well that's for next week. And that's this Tuesday's Top 10 List. Check out our latest blog on lofipolysci.com from Friday. And connect to us everywhere, people. Let your voice be heard. Always remember that Lo-Fi Poli Sci is more than just me. It's the week that we be. Talk to you soon, Lo-Fi listeners. Pickering, signing off.